came with your friends. And do you know why your friends brought you? There was a reason. Your friend sitting next to you is Mark Krauser, and he wrote to us about you, Rosa. Three years ago, Mark himself was involved in a terrible car crash. It was a miracle he survived at all. He had to spend a year in hospital after it. He had to learn to walk again. Worst of all, the injuries he had to his head mean that he can still hardly speak. But those injuries don't stop him writing. And he wrote to us a most moving letter. And I've got his letter here, Roseanne. It's all about you. I'll just read this. Roseanne has been the driving force to create a drop-in centre for the head injured. When I go to the centre, I feel normal, which rarely happens to me because of my speech. I find Roseanne simply wonderful, but definitely deserving some recognition. Well, we went to Battle Hospital in Reading to see what Roseanne has created there. And we found an old casualty unit has been transformed by her gift for creating happiness. Oh, good to see you. Can you get another day with me? Oh, it's not too bad. Lovely. Oh, darling, it is good to see you. Don't have to look good, handsome creature, Christopher Reeves. Come on. They don't just come here because it's fun. They achieve a great deal, too. Simon and Peter couldn't walk when they first arrived. Nothing that Roseanne does surprises me. <laughs> she always pulls off the impossible. Like what? Um, well, just uh, like dissenting. I mean, we none of us thought she would ever do it uh, when we fir first came down to have a look at the premises. Well, it was derelict. It was awful. Um, and everybody said, you'll never do it. But uh, she motivated and drove everybody and said, yes, we will, and we all believed in her. And uh, this is the result, a marvellous place. It was very important that it wasn't like an institution. Why? Because they've had all that, and now they don't need that. They just want to be at home and relaxed and friendly. So the flowers, the plants, the paid awards, that was necessary. What was it like when you found this place? Um, Seven years unused with whatever they wanted to dump, dumped. Old beds, old boilers, old dinner wagons, old carpets. Why didn't you walk straight out again? Because we needed it. A memory class is run here by principal clinical psychologist Trevor Powell. Roseanne persuaded him to get involved. Now he spends most of his time helping the head injured. What's the alternative to this place? Well, the alternative is... Well, there is no alternative. The alternative is sitting at home, watching the paint dry. What's she like herself when she's talking to the head injured people? She's, she's excellent. I mean, she's not, a, she's not a trained professional, but she's one of the best people I've seen dealing with people with handicaps. She's a warm, generous, enthusiastic... I've never heard anyone say a bad word about her. A lot of the people here love Roseanne, a lot of them say that. I will do anything for her. And she can help a whole family recover from their tragedy, as Simon Benford and his mother know. She's made a big difference to our life. Really, I mean, she's like another mum. She makes me laugh. She opens her house to people whose sons or daughters have, um, you know, when you, you have got a son or daughter that has had a head injury, you don't feel, get any rest from them. And um, she's had them to stay weekends so the parents can have a weekend on their own. You know, she, she's just a very caring person. Suppose well, if someone were to close it. Someone? Well, we just won't let that happen. What would you miss? I wouldn't miss anything because I wouldn't let it happen. I'd sit in. When they gave me the key, I said, there is nobody going to get this key back. And I mean that. I would sit in, and I'm sure everybody else would sit in with me. So they'd have to give in. They, we're here to stay. It's needed. It really is a service that's needed. And it would be wonderful if the powers that be were to decide to not fund us, we don't want funding, we want grants. But if they don't, we should still stay here. See, I should just have to carry on with my little brown bowl. <laughs> uh, most unlikely monk, I've ever seen. Mm, yeah, I don't know that I'd like to be a monk. It's, they have a vow of silence, don't they? I couldn't handle that. <laughs> 
So if you had told me to say to him, what would it be? Thanks a million for providing such a wonderful centre, something that the, uh, the social services of the National Health Service can't provide. Um, and she's done it through sheer guts and determination. I love you for everything you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you. Till then, from all of us, good night.